As a web creator and a web designer, I have a pretty long list of resources and tools that I use. Also, every single time like I discover a brand new tool, something that's really cool that's gonna help me out with my creativity, help me out with my workflow, well, I put it down inside of a list and my list has been growing. And there's so many dope tools out there that are just waiting to be discovered. So what I thought to do was to create a new series where I could showcase some of these tools, where I could show you all some of the ones that I use just about on every single project, some new discoveries, and also just some really cool rare finds that are fun to play with. And I like to geek out on this type of stuff. And I'm hoping that a lot of you also out there like to geek out too when it comes to finding these new tools. And if you do, drop in inside the comments and let me know. That way I could keep putting out episodes like this and of course, don't forget the YouTube stuff, like subscribing and stuff. All right, let's go ahead and kick this off and I'm gonna show you three really dope tools that I'm using right now that I discovered and let's just go ahead and have some fun. Number one is gonna be patterns and this one's dope. First off, it's free. And if you like to play around and put like really cool backgrounds or something like that, this could be really helpful. What this does is it's a free download and you could get all kinds of these cool backgrounds right over here. Now I am gonna leave the links to everything inside the descriptions, but really quick, let me show you how this works. So you could download this and you could get a sketch file, a Figma file, XD or AI. Uh, I'm gonna show you the Figma one because Figma is free and I think most people are using that nowadays. And here it is inside my Figma file. Now I could go into any of these elements, let's say, I want to just use this blurb right here, put in the background. Well, I could select this. I could change the color to either the presets over here, or I could put in my own color as well and change that so that way it fits my site. And something like this could be really cool for like the background of a section on your website. And then we could export it and export SVG, of course. That way it's a small file size. So there's so much room to play with over here and you can get super creative with this. I've started using these for some backgrounds. Like one of the backgrounds I like to use would be like the dots right here. Uh, these are really popular to use. And see each one of these sections right here, you know, you could isolate the parts right here and take only what you need. And you could, you know, have fun with it. This is where your creativity could really open up. So, the best part about this, of course, is that this is a free tool. And if we go back over to their website, this is by Product Is right here, I believe. Let me see. Let's go ahead and click on this. Yeah, it's by Is right here, Is Graphics. And they got all kinds of cool stuff in here, too. Some of it is free and some of it is paid. I've been checking it out and even the paid stuff looks really good in here and for good prices. So go ahead and geek out on this, but patterns I feel is a really good one because it's free. All right, the second tool, number two, is going to be our calculator. Now, whenever I'm building a site, I no longer use pixels for fonts. So let's say the base font for body is 16 pixels. This is an easy to use converter to show us RAM. Now I choose to use RAM for all of our fonts, for all of our font sizes because uh, pixels is not good for accessibility. And the reason is when somebody zooms in the screen, well, the fonts could break if it's a big text, but if it's RAM, then the fonts and the text will adjust to the zoom in size. So let's say you have a title, it's 48 pixels. There we go, we got a RAM of three. So you could convert all of your pixels and you know, sometimes it's 42. This just makes it so much faster when you're setting up your typography, especially if you're an Elementor user, it makes the whole process quicker. And every single project I do when I'm setting up my typography, I use this right here, this calculator. And if we go back right here, we have all these different calculators as well. So there's all kinds of stuff, it's super fast. But this is the one I use the most is the PX to the RAM converter. All right, so that's tool number two. This is my go-to. In fact, if I were to open up a new toolbar, you're gonna see it's one of my go-tos here because I use it so much. And tool number three, this is something for the Elementor users and I am really starting to fall in love with this plugin right here. This is Toolkit for Elementor. Now that it is built just for Elementor, 
but let me explain why I'm falling in love with it. I have been able to remove plugins and combine everything into this one plugin right here. Now, this isn't a regular plugin or add ons that you would see for Elementor that has widgets. This is all about performance and all about optimizing your website and then has some pleasant extras in there that I was really just happy to see. Let me go ahead and show you. I'll do a brief walkthrough on it. So I installed it here on our website. If we go over to Elementor, then we got another option here for toolkit. And from here, right off the bat, we could always see where our performance is at. And I just have to say that I have been playing around with this and optimizing sites with it. And it is, it's been doing more than what I've had with WP Rocket. WP Rocket has been my go-to plugin. It has been the one I've used on all of our websites but I have been getting better results with this. Now, there's a lot to go through here. We won't go through everything, but if you do wanna see a more detailed uh, walkthrough and tutorial on Toolkit, let me know in the comments. I could do a whole video just on this alone because it is that robust and that awesome. So right here, you know, is like, like we would have with uh, WP Rocket or another speed optimization, we got the option to turn off a lot of, to turn off a lot of functions, turn off a lot of things uh, for the loading. And it's, it's far more robust than what we, would, what we would see inside WP Rocket. But what this also reminds me of is asset cleanup. Now, Asset Cleanup has been one of my go-tos for optimizing websites, and this right here is basically combined Asset Cleanup and WP Rocket. So there's more to it. Now, there's so much in here. I could go through this for probably like 30 minutes, definitely, but we're not going to do that. We got something like a site sinker where we could actually sync like templates from different sites. So if you want to create a template library, you could create one and sync your sites to your own template library. And this part right here, this is something I found really, really dope. And I was really uh, happy to see that's our theme manager right here. So first off, we could put something like a template here in our dashboard. And I'm adding this to our client sites right now. So what I did was I created a support portal. And if I go to my dashboard, we're going to see now our template here displayed on, on our dashboard. And if you're building sites for your clients, you could build like a support panel and that way too, you could do a bit more branding as well. If you build a site for a client, you could do your branding, put something really dope up there, like a welcome message to your clients and a way for them to get in contact with you. It's a really great way to uh, connect with your clients and give them a more personalized uh, touch. And then also another thing that I found was really cool that we could do here in the theme manager, we can customize our login page. So one of the tools that I use on all of our websites is WPS Hide My Login. Uh, that allows us to change our login, to change the dash WP admin or dash login because bots are using that prefix right there to try to attack your site. So for a security measure, you should always change that WP admin. Here, we could go ahead and add our own. I'm just gonna put at our own. So now if somebody wants to log in, this is the prefix for it right here, at our own. And then you could also do the same for login attempts. Now that is the third plugin that I'm able to remove. I do not need to use a WPS hide my login. So, so far this one plugin has allowed me to remove three others. And then also we could customize our login page right here. We could go ahead and put a background image. You know, let's see, let's go ahead and find an image here. We're gonna put this one. Uh, we could go ahead and put our logo. Let me find our logo here. There we go. We got the width, you could put your width. And then you could also, you know, you could put your URL here. There's so much to do. This is dope too. You could put your own CSS. You could basically build your own custom, customize your own login. So no more default WordPress login. And let me show you what it looks like. Now, if we go to an incognito, let's go ahead and try to log in. Remember we had add our own, the prefix. And don't worry, this is going to change after this tutorial. So you can't get into my site. But yeah, let's go ahead and try to log in. 
and now you can see that we got our own login page over here there's an option for css we could play around with the logo size and then with the css uh we could go ahead and style all this up and there's just so much more we just scratched the surface of it for toolkit for elementor well that's it those are my top three for this episode now if you like these kind of videos you want to see more tools more resources drop them inside the comments i could put these out on a weekly basis because i got so many of them and i'm always discovering more i mean there's so many dope tools out there and the thing is these keep me excited and i'm pretty sure that they're going to keep you excited as well and when we're excited that's when the creative passion starts to come out and we get extra creative and have fun doing what we do well, I hope this video helped out and you had fun with it. And, you know, don't forget to do all that good YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe. It does help to support the channel. And I'll be back again with more web design related content. All right. Thank you.